Let's talk about a major component that you will probably use inside your Nuxt dashboard, which at CN, it's the tables. So we got two options with ChatCN to work on the tables. The first option, it's the table itself. So if I go to table down here, we can see that we got a very nice example, which actually a model based on a table. It's simple with columns and a data table. So if we look at it, it works this way. Uh, with uh, ChatCN, we got first a table component where we inject here, so we can directly uh, here inject the code on the front end, and then it's up to us to loop through the table head and the table row to display our table. If you did some HTML before, it's really easy for you to understand. We have a table with rows and columns and dynamic data like this. If I look at the code, I always got a list of data to inject to the table, which is totally normal. And most of the time, you would prefer to use another table, which is the data table. So if I come back here on the data table, I can see that I got basically exactly the same table as we saw before. But the difference here is that now I got filters and I got, for instance, those checkbox and those elements that I can choose here. So what's the difference? Well, the difference is that we had to chat CN TANSTACK which is a library that helps us to work with all those filters and stuff. And TANSTACK here is going to be on the top of our um, uh, ChatCN library. And we got way more code. And if we look at the code closely, it's not one component, but it's basically three files. And those three files are those ones. Here we got basically the columns. So we're going to have a separate file with the columns. We got here the data table.view, which is basically the table itself. And we can have a third file, which is here the tab data table dropdown. But in my case, it's going to be the page. So what I want to do is to create a new page. And what I propose you to do is to create a page transactions. So if we come back here, we already got a page transactions, which is here. And I'm going to remove it. And I'm going to create a new folder called transactions. And inside, I'm going to put an index.view. Why do I do that? Because I will here put my columns as a file if I want to. And I can put also here the data table if I want to. However, my data table is going to look the same almost everywhere. So I'm going to put it into the component. So I'm going just to initiate this um, component that we got here. And I'm not going to waste my time, okay? I'm just going to copy paste the header coming from here and I'm going to inject my slash div in here. And instead of having product.new here, I'm going to uh, put, uh, for instance, all your transactions. And here I'm going to type transactions and we are good. I need to be sure that in my menu up here, I got transactions, there we go. I'm going to remove the others because if I don't get the page, Nuxt will not like this. Okay, so I got my transactions page. I'm going to come back and suddenly I got the page that is created. Very nice. So the first thing that I want to do is to install this data table. It's going to be better in my case. And I have a full guide that shows me how to use this data table here that we can follow. This is not easy to handle at the first um, attempt but I really encourage you to try to uh, work on this one. Okay, so I'm going to come back to the top and I'm going to add the table to my, uh, actually to my instance here, to my project. I'm going also to add the tan stack. If you don't have the tan stack, it's not going to work, okay? So you had tan stack view table and you are good. Okay, I'm going to start again. And please here, follow the steps. Okay, the first thing that I want to do is to add my data table uh, here, data table.view. So here it's inside the payments because in the schema that is showed on the documentation, basically we assume that this data table is relative to uh, payments. Me, in my head and by experience, my data table almost never change. So this one, I put it globally. So I'm going to type data table.view. 
and I'm going to inject this data table. So here we got the column definition. We're going to come back to it after. And here we can see we got the full data table. I'm just going to copy paste it directly in here. And we're going to see that we've got some errors. So if I put everything here, we can see here that we don't necessarily find uh, 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 here the TanStack uh, view table. It's because my VS code is not configured yet. Okay, so we've got this data table and what I can do is to come just here and to call data table down here. However, here I need to inject the columns and the data. So I'm going to come back here on the top and I'm going to give all the JavaScript that the data table needs. So of course, the first thing it's going to be the data. So here, let's say that I don't get any model for now though. I'm just going to put an empty array and I'm going to inject. So I need to use, of course, here in this case, uh, TypeScript. And what I'm going to add in here, I'm going to add my data. So for now, the data, it's totally empty, okay? we don't have anything. So we would need to generate some objects. So I come back here and if I look uh, uh, deeper into uh, the, 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 the code, we can see that to render the table here, they are doing a call, a get data call, and they got a model in here. And they return the, the data. This is the data we inject directly to uh, the data table that I got just down here. Okay, me, I don't got any call to do now. I'm going to fake this call with a uh, actually a chat GPT function that is going to uh, fake the data with a data model that I'm going to inject. And when I get the model here, I will be able to work on the columns because this is on this model that I'm going to be based to create the columns. All right, so I asked ChatGPT to create a function for me that will be called generate random data and it will assign to data here, the random data, random objects, okay? So what I can do here is to say, on mounted, I want you to generate, okay, <laughs> some fake data. So I'm going to put generate random data and 10 items. So here we can see that I got an error. I'm going to import basically here my on mounted from view and I want to import also my ref. Why do I do that? You will say to me, hey Guillaume, you are on the next, you don't need to do that. Well, basically in the documentation and here we can see that I got an error. If we look here at rendering the table, I often need to import some elements because some elements are not going to import it. And for instance, I need to import the H from view, which is going to hydrate, if I remember well, here my, my, uh, my columns. Okay, so I got this and we are good. Now, if I come back and I try to open my app, I still got a problem. We don't understand what's happening in here because I didn't do the columns. So now we are going to work together on injecting those columns. And those columns are going to come from where? They are going to come from a file that we are going to create next to our index in here. Let's come back. This is supposed to be the first step that we need to pass is to create a columns.ts file. So Either you can inject the columns directly up here, either you can create a file, it doesn't matter. It's just that we want to see how the documentation is working and we want to respect the rules. So here we can see that we got an object columns with a model, an access O key, which will be the key of your object. So if you come back in here on my function, here I'm uh, creating here um, on the fly, objects on the model ID, amount, status, email. These are going to be the key. On the header, we can see that we use this H. This H, it's basically the way to hydrate here, create a div, and then put some uh, style if you want to, and then to put the name of your uh, header here. Then we use the cell, and on the cell, we can catch the row, and we can catch the values to show the different value. And at the end, we return again, we hydrate again with a division, and then the formatted value. So basically I can copy paste that, come back here and inject here the uh, colon that we've got there. So I got an amount. So if I come back down here, I can put colons. Okay. So I got colons 
and I can inject the colons. However, these colons here doesn't come from everywhere. If I come back and I try to update, it's not working. So I need to import my colons. So import colons from where? Well, it's just next to here from columns that we got up here. And look at this, when we launch the app, we finally got our table here with everything, actually with just the amount. So what I propose you to do is to work on these columns together because this is how you are going to shape your data column. So I'm going to remove this first object and I'm going to start directly to work on a new accessor key. So here I got accessor key. And here I want to put email at first. Then I got to display my header and then I have a function and I need to call h from view with my div. Okay, and on this div here, I can put some classes if I want to. So here I can put actually a class here and I can put text left. Okay, and after that, it's going to be a colon with a title email. So when I come back, look at this, I got my title email, which is here. If I would like to specifically do something on the row, I can use cell, okay? And in cell, I got an object called row, and uh, actually uh, an object, sorry, containing row. <laughs> and then I can catch my email again. So to do that, I'm going to type const email is equal to row dot get value of email. So I'm going to remove that, get value from email. Okay, once I get the value, I can't do this. It's impossible, okay? I mean, I can do it, but you're gonna probably have some mistake. You can use the H from div here. At this point, this is what the library is um, talking about, right? Probably in the future it will work, but in March 2024, the view library is specifying to use the, the function H from view to hydrate the, um, dynamically our table, I think so. So here I'm going to add text left and font medium, right? And we should be good. And then I can add my email. So suddenly I got my elements here. It's working really fine. I can do exactly the same for every key that I have. So if I put unlimited email, I'm going to have the four columns displayed. <laughs> this is not what I want to do. So what I want to do is basically to change this email to status. So here, remember, we got a status. So if I update, we suddenly get email, email status. There we go. And up here, I think I want to change it for amount. So I can change my amount. And again, if I want to use a library here, like numeral to put a dollar in front of it, I can do it. So basically, if, if I'm completely out of libraries, I can use just the dollar and we suddenly have the amount of the dollars like this. So I got the status. And then if I want at the end, I can put, for instance, the ID, so I'm going to add the ID, which is probably useless, but there we go. We got here the email amount status and ID, and we got our table working. So let's come back to the transactions and let's look at what we did. We created the data component table um, that is going to help me to create the data table. We injected the columns. And the columns are going to change for every table that we're going to use, of course. If I'm going to have later account and I want to display a table, I will have different columns. So the things that the thing that I would like to change is going to be only this one, okay? It's going to be the columns, but not in this file, but in a new file, of course, a new columns file. And then we inject the data. So basically here the data, it's fake data, but for you, it's going to be a, a function that is going to fetch the data and then fulfill the data into data. The data table component here is going to receive the columns, the schema. So it's going to build the table with every column. And at the end, it's going to fulfill every row with every column corresponding to the data set that you gave. Last thing, and if you want to go deeper into it, you can go here on the documentation. You can add what we call raw actions. So you can add some clicks to elements, some custom functions. 
You can also, uh, down here, use the pagination control. So here, the pagination control, it's really useful when you get a very long table, a lot of pages to display on the table. So we can see here that we are using here um, uh, use view table here and we've got down here the table dot previous page or next page okay so let's say that you have a lot of data to uh, put into a table you can do it you can also sort the table so here basically I'm not going to do it because um, here I just have fake data and it's just a demonstration on how to use uh, this data table but you can easily sort here by adding on the utils file your function here value of data and then after on your view data table so let's go here to it here we got the data table here here on data table what you can use is to use this piece of code get sorted row model on sort changing end the state so I can come back here put that and I need of course to uh, provide all the missing value so what I need to do is to come back here and use this export value updater coming from the utils file. Remember the utils file has been created when we uh, were working um, on installing ChatCN. So uh, basically on the first course. So here I got what I need and then I can sort my table. If I want to make the header sortable, after that there's a last step it's to add this on click here, this return button on click element. So here it's a piece of code exactly like what we had before. I need to come back to my columns. I'm going to come back to my columns. And here instead of on the line six, instead of having this simple renderer, I need to open here and to add here, if I don't get the button, I need to call my button here and I need to add my object colon. So my object colon, it's coming from here. So remember, we got the row down here. So I need to put here a comma. There we go. We got the row here, but we also got the colon coming from here. And if we want to add a, like a, a, a row up and down, we can go here on the top with the chevron and there we go. So here to sort, we need a button and we use the button of ChatCN. And this button is going to trigger the function toggle sorting coming from the colon uh, key. Sort here your colon. You will need to inject a button. And in this button, we are going to bind a function. And this function is going to use the function that are, that are provided by ChatCN to handle your table. And in the colon object, we can see that we got a function called toggle sorting, okay? And toggle sorting here, we definitely got the code, so we don't need to write it, which is the force of ChatCN again. We can use directly this toggle sorting to sort our own table. Again, for the table with ChatCN, it's really easy to understand. We got two possibilities. If we want to display a simple table, we can use the table component which doesn't take any real logic different from HTML. If I go to the data table, I got something really different, something probably more complex, but you just need one time to set it up and it's going to work forever. We got here a data table with different data and we can sort the element. If you want to sort your table or paginate your table, as we can see here, you need to use data table, okay? To use the data table, you need to install this data table and to use TanStack. Once it's done, you need to create here the models of the colon, okay? You need to inject the data table and you need to fetch your data. Once you got your data, you can basically push directly to the data table the colon and the data. At the end, it will render to you a normal table, a data table with filters and all the data that you provided.